it is hard in those moments. You see some people just want to keep their heads down and don't, you know the right thing, but doing the right thing. It's hard. Spike made a whole movie called Do the Right Thing. It's hard to do the right thing. And it's easier to do the right thing when you see someone else doing it. And so what, what Alex yes. has done, what Jessica has done, we'll learn about it, is, uh, is, is to do that right thing and to serve, you know, the people, not, not a person. So it's amazing that Thank you with, Je with, with Jessica, it's amazing that the idea of, of being silenced is literally de her story deals with non-disclosure with a contractual um, effort to, to suppress people's ability to tell the truth and to speak truth to power and to take those stands we're talking about. Jessica, welcome to the stage. Please share your story or take the conversation, whatever direction you wish. Thank you so much, Sean. Um, you brought me to tears a few minutes ago with your monologue. I'm 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 totally honored and starstruck. I will just be honest. I I do a show every week multiple times, but I'm really nervous for the first time in a long time. So I'm just gonna put that out. You're there. among family. You're among family. <laughs> Thank you. And you can all be forgiven for uh, not knowing who I am because um, my story has kind of, although I've been fighting silence for going on seven years, I've kind of been fighting a dual front of silence by my story not being shared. So you're all forgiven if you have no idea who I am, but I'm going to try to give you a really tight version of it. Um, basically, I lived in a Fox News echo chamber, daily mental malpractice from the Russian propaganda of right wing news for eight years, which led me to support and ultimately work for Donald Trump in 2016. For a brief time, I was the Hispanic engagement director for that campaign. I know that sounds like an oxymoron. It is. But <laughs> that was my job um, before I got sabotaged and just utterly um, terrified and felt like the whole weight of that campaign was was sitting on my shoulders. Um, I was accused of federal crimes, accused of leaking Trump's taxes, all kinds of false stories to try to decredit discredit and demean me. So anyway, long story short, walk away from this picture feeling like my life is under a dark cloud. And I had gone to the Trump campaign ignorantly, blindly, thinking that I could bring diverse support for this man uh, out from the shadows. Walk away feeling like my whole life is in a dark shadow. And um, about a year later, um, wanting to walk away, wanting to be able to just for nobody to ever know that Jessica Denson even worked for the Trump campaign. Um, I kind of had an existential crisis and realized I had to confront this. And I didn't have time or the money to get a lawyer or the legal you know, resources and team together that I needed. And so in 2017, literally pro se on my own, I first sued the Trump campaign in a human rights lawsuit in New York State. Long story short, they came after me with an illegal non-disclosure agreement that I and every single other person on that Trump campaign had signed in 2016. It basically said you could not criticize Donald Trump for the rest of your life. It said that anything that he deemed confidential would be confidential. So we're all just out here supposed to guess what Donald Trump deems is confidential. And they came after me for $1.5 million for violating their NDA by bringing my human rights lawsuit. So what did I do? I got scared immediately, but then as so many of these amazing speakers are describing today, I didn't retreat, I didn't back down. I said, oh yeah, you're gonna come after me and tell me to enter into your illegal arbitration. I don't think so, let me sue you again. So I sued them again pro se in federal court to invalidate the NDA. Um, it took almost a year later for me to get my first two lawyers. I had we the first thing we had to do was fight an illegal judgment that was entered against me for fifty thousand dollars for violating this NDA. Almost bankrupted me. A lot of this time that I was going through this, I didn't have a permanent place to live. It was incredibly frightening. But we defeated that illegal judgment. We sued them again in in two class actions, and at the end of the day. What started off as one woman with no, no one but God and my mother on my side, I have this beautiful legal team that came together and we invalidated every single non-disclosure agreement that was signed by any staffer in 2016, opening the way for people to speak the truth. To me, what these contracts have represented is the barrier between Donald Trump and accountability. That's what I have wanted people to see 
in my story from day one is I have wanted this, them to see that as corrupt as our system seems right now, our judicial system, that it is possible to hold this man accountable. We have to use the laws that we have and we, can, we have to be fearless in our pursuit of them. Um, one thing that Alex was talking about was what a serious, serious place we are in as a country and what we are facing. And him and I, I think, um, faced a version of political persecution that is a real, real prospect. God forbid we allow Donald Trump to become president of this country again. I mean, I have so many friends and human rights is such a special and dear thing to me who are in this country because they are seeking political asylum from other countries where they cannot freely express themselves. Can you imagine? And I know there are people on this very call who feel like they may have to seek political asylum from the United States in another country if Donald Trump is reelected. That is, these are the stakes. This is what we are facing. It may be incoherent rants about jailing his enemies that Donald Trump is posting on his untruth social account, but he has an apparatus, a very dangerous, malicious, intellectually um, you know, smart, I hate even using that word, but they know what they're doing, these people that are propping him up in, in Project 2025. I know these people, I worked with them in 2016, and they are the worst because they have no moral guardrails and they are willing to prop up a felon and a deranged person who seriously needs mental help. They're willing to put someone in power for their own ends and gains. So, so serious. So um, very grateful to be here. So grateful to support an extraordinary woman who has dedicated her life to pursuing justice, both from the prosecution angle and from the rehabilitation angle of the people caught up in the justice system. I mean, she is just a resounding example of what this country needs. Uh, we, each one of us, you better believe I have doubted it so many times whether I mattered. Okay. It was the first hurdle I had to overcome back in 2017. It was, there was so much self-doubt and thinking that who am I, who's going to care about me? Why do I matter? Each one of us matters so much. And we are, I mean, we just think about this, like history is literally going to be written about each one of us and what we are doing in this moment. It's an extraordinary honor. It is so serious, but I am so grateful that we all have this, this mantle to carry. Here, here. I mean, wow. So amazing to meet you and hear your story for the first time for me, my God. What a hero you are. And uh, I'm going to stop. I just wanted to weigh in because I'm, I'm so moved by what you've done, what you've said, and what you're willing to uh, stand for. So God bless you. Don't go anywhere wrong because they're going to call on you, you a second here. But, you know, Jessica, I didn't say, I don't know if you were on at the very beginning when Bertunde invoked his mom. And I, I, I kind of was talking about something else, but I want to bring my mom down for a minute from heaven. She was four foot, 11 inches tall. Patty Duke was her name, famous actress. And she was uh, a mighty warrioress. Uh, she was president of our union. And I just, watching you talk just now, I felt like she was, yeah, looking at you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you, you, um, all of the yeah, angels are looking at you. Yeah. And I, I think there's, I had to look up uh, a word you said, uh, just be, be humble about my, my vocab. You said, uh, pro se, you filed these, these suits pro se. And I'm like, hello, internet. What does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> it, means it means you represented yourself. Um, but I think it was the opposite spirit of what you described, uh, of the more of the selfish people who are willing to go along with wrong to get a little something for themselves. You did it to literally free other people, you know, from these really uh, obscene terms and conditions that they were bound by uh, with, with this campaign. Uh, so real hero stuff. And it, it took a lot for me to say stuff instead of the other word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, um, 
the reverberations of that precedent are going to help people all across corporate America, all across uh, all kinds of civil and criminal spaces. It just blows my mind how many um, types of disciplines and skill sets and um, qualities that are needing to be deployed. You almost, you almost, you almost want to like thank that guy because look what he's doing he's giving all of us this opportunity to show what we're capable of and so we're going to send him back down to florida or to whatever place he has to go once he's sentenced and we can um figure out what our next step is but you matter to me you obviously matter to everyone